Uh, greetings, friends. It's me, Wayman. And some time ago, uh, a YouTube user uh, asked me uh, if God murdered Jesus and if God was responsible for the murder or the death of Christ. And basically, I, I was able to give him some kind of answer, but maybe it wasn't a very good one. And I promised that if I came up with a better one, uh, I would be sure to maybe do a video on it or send it his way. And I did come up with a better example. And since the uh, writers of the New Testament were Hellenistic Jews, Greco-Roman Jews living in the Greco-Roman time period, they're influenced by Hellenistic philosophy and Hellenistic uh, mythology and religion, the whole works. So if we remove the ideas of, of Paul, which were attached to the meaning of Christ, remove the ideas of John, which were attached to the meanings of Christ, we come up with a whole new way of looking at the death of Christ and why the sky was blackened and uh, why things went the way they did. Uh, in Book 16 of the Iliad, we have the beloved son of God, Sarpedon, which was Zeus's son whom he deeply loved. And when we read this, uh, we're going to see an example that could be applied to how the Hebrew God, or the Christian God, we'll say, uh, felt about his beloved son, Jesus. And maybe he was just favored by the deity, and the deity knew that Jesus was fated to die and felt horrible about it because he could not and did not want to change that fate because that was the fate that Jesus accepted. So let's look at the example of the death of Sarpedon and Zeus's response uh, to himself and how he feels about it. He's very torn and the response in the conversation he has with Hera, his heifer-eyed wife. It's a beautiful text. This is Zeus speaking. Ah, miserable me, since the man I love most, Sarpedon, my son, is fated to die at the hands of Patroclus, the son of Menodius. And now, as I ponder, I cannot decide whether I shall snatch him up yet alive or s s and set him down far away from weeping war in the rich land of Lycia, or whether now I shall let him go down at the hands of Patroclus. And heifer-eyed Regal Hera answered him thus, Most dreadful son of Cronus, what are you saying? Can it be that you really wish to deliver a mortal, one long foredestined by fate, from dolorous death? Well, do as you like, but don't suppose for one moment that all of us like what you do. And here's something else that you'll do well to remember. If you send Sarpedon alive to his home, don't be surprised when some other god wishes to take his own dear son away from horrible conflict. For the fighting around the great city of Priam, there are many sons of gods, and you will surely stir up fierce resentment among the immortals. But if the man is really so dear to your heart, and if you are really so dearly grieved at his fate, why go ahead and allow him to fall and die at the hands of Patroclus, down there in the bloody encounter. Then, when his years are over, and his soul is gone forever, send death and care long sleep, that they may bear him away to a wide land of Lycia, where his brothers, kinfolk, and kinfolk will give him the dead's due rights, a proper entombment with a mound and memorial pillar. She spoke, nor was she ignored by the father of men and gods. Yet he wept a shower of bloody tears on the earth in honor of his dear son, whom Patroclus was soon to kill in the fertile land of the Trojans, far away from his own dear country. So, here we get the concept of the divine, or the deity, weeping for his beloved son. And it's beautiful, and maybe this is why the sky was darkened on uh, Calvary in that glum period when uh, 
the beloved son who was fated to die in an unjust fashion, according to New Testament literature, uh, was nailed to the stake. Uh, it was virtue that was nailed to the stake. And it grieved the deity because of this beloved person was uh, living out and meeting the end of his fate. So, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, also, too, there, there were deities who were swept up and, and taken away from harm. Uh, Aeneas, when, when he met the raging Achilles on the battlefield was uh, taken up and swept away, I believe, by Apollo because he was not yet fated to die. Uh, he was fated to start a great uh, Trojan race, which Virgil picked up on and linked the Romans to that, which is interesting. So, also like the Christians, uh, you know, put themselves in the lineage using Christ, uh, the Romans did that uh, with the Aeneid, starting with Aeneas. Excellent stuff. So, uh, just think about that, and um, it might be some kind of answer. Uh, be well, and remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.